I'm in the middle of recording a new course for a plural site on JavaScript proxies. As I was delving into how proxies work, I discovered something I should have noticed, but I never did. There might not be anything like an object or an array. Let me explain. Forgive my backup glasses. I broke my real glasses, and evidently when I ordered these, I asked for the Unabomber plus a little of Jeffrey Dahmer. I hate him too, but I need to see. Let's take a look. So I've got a pretty simple project here going, and I have a handler we're going to use later, and all it does is really show you when some object that's using a proxy is trying to read a value. That's all it really does. Don't worry if you don't understand proxies. Really what I want you to get your head around is what an object really is. So we're going to start with this pretty simple example. I've created a customer object. It has some fields. It has a function that you can call. And so if we just do like you might imagine, out, which is a little helper method I have, cust.firstName, this will output the first name. In fact, I have this running in a, a watch here. So every time we run it, we're going to start to see these things being output. You can see starting and then there's Steve. So just keep an eye on this to see what we're actually looking at. And in that same way, we could say cust.format. And we're going to get the last name first, right? We've got this as a simple sort of object. And so this makes me think that, that this object really is like an object that has properties and methods and maybe events, has other things to it. But that's not really what's going on here. You may have noticed before that you can either call something like last name here, or you could use an array-like syntax to give the last name as well. And so how does this really work? If we go to the handler, we can see that anytime someone is getting something from an object that this is handling, it's going to just write out reading key so-and-so, right? So this might not surprise you if we go ahead and create a proxy for our cust object. And I'm just gonna pass in that handler because I want it to output every time we read one of these properties or functions from our object. Let's take this proxy, which is just a wrapper around an object. We put them here. What are we going to see here? We're going to see reading with key. Let me make this so it's not so crazy. Reading with key first name, reading with key format, with last name, first name. And so every time we get this, we're actually seeing each of those reads. And all it's doing is under the covers, it is asking it to get some keyed value on that target. That's all it's doing. And so this isn't that surprising that effectively our object is a dictionary, right? It's not really an object in the way I think of the way that C Sharp or C Before It or other languages construct objects that have these pointers on them effectively, right? And that's all fine and good for a simple object like this. But what about if we cr created an array here, right? And I'm going to create a array proxy. And this time I'm going to pass it in that custs object, the object that is the array. And I'm going to add that handler just so we can see if this works in the same way we'd expect it to, right? If we go to the proxy and ask for the first element, let's do out here. We can see what the proxy is showing us is that it's reading the object with a key of zero. So if it's using the same mechanic, how does an array really work? Is it really any different from an object? And I don't think it is. So if we look at the second object, right? But what if we just pass it in a string? And it might be simple to say that all it's doing is coercing that into a number but it really is whatever that key is. So this syntax is identical to this syntax. 
when you add elements to an array, all they're doing is injecting into that dictionary an item with ordinal numbers as the keys. The thing that really makes an array is that it has the prototype of an array. And what do I mean by that? So let's set a breakpoint here. And so we can see here that we're in the process of running this and we're stopped here on the creation of the proxy. But I want, I want you to actually see is that this cust object has these methods, right? It has the two objects that are in them and that the proxy and that the array object itself has a prototype both for object and for array. And this is where all those methods we might be used to are called. So what's interesting, let me unbreak that and tell it to go, is that if I wanted to pop one of those methods from the proxy, guess what I can do? I can just get the object from the proxy and then a couple parentheses to make sure I'm executing it. This is going to return the function that's either on the object like we had over here or that is in the that is in one of the prototypes. So if I save this, let's see what happens. And I guess I should say array proxy that length. If that works. Yeah. So once we pop something off of it, it's going to reduce the number to one. It's no longer to have two with it. So even functions are just a member of something like a dictionary. So when we're looking up this value for length or for pop, what it's really doing is it's looking at the internal dictionary of keys, doesn't find it there, and then further goes and looks on the prototypes to see if it exists there as well. So everything we're used to thinking about with the JavaScript object, I think, is just a dictionary plus prototypes, right? That's all we're really dealing with. There's nothing aside from primitive types. It's all kind of the same thing. And let's see if that continues to be true. I'm going to paste the class here just for an order. And this is a different way to construct an object, right? This essentially creates a constructor function so that if I do const my order, new order, right? And in here I have to give it a, a number and then let's say net 15. If I just write out my order, you'll see that the order is just what we think it is. But notice, unlike what we were looking at earlier, there is no function here. Because the difference between the way we constructed this object, format isn't added to the prototype. It's just a member of the object. Whereas, down here, this order has added the send to the prototype of this object. So let's see if that's true. So if we look at my order, we'll see that the three properties are there, but our send here is on the prototype. In fact, that constructor is also on the prototype, but that's not as interesting. So if I call send here, what's going to happen? It's going to go and look on the my order, see that it's not one of the simple properties, and it'll also scan the prototype. And it, ooh, look, it sees a send, it's a function, and then it can return that. But all of this is happening. Let's go ahead and create a proxy for this as well. Order proxy for my order. And I'll pass in that same handler so we can see what this actually looks like. And if we go ahead and let this run, we'll see that we get the send, but right before the send, we're getting that same reading with key. So there's a little difference in creating simple objects and creating objects from a class or a constructor function. But the sort of magic here is that I've been doing JavaScript for longer than I care to mention, and I've never had to think about it in this way. It's only when you start to get into the minutia, the small little pieces that are moving, that it ends up being something that's important for you to know. I'm endlessly curious, and so it becomes sort of easy for me to think about and dive in and try to understand what in fact is happening here. So are there arrays in JavaScript? Are there real objects in JavaScript? How is that related to class? 
it might not matter, but I'm glad I know it. So I'm not sure how any of this knowledge is going to help you, but I think when you're starting to, especially when you're debugging, get a sense of what's really happening under the covers, that this really is just a dictionary and the functionality of what you can do to something like an array or a class you create is going to be in that prototype object. Probably is good to know. Might be too much inside baseball or looking under the covers too much, but that's kind of where we sit. As you may know, I don't take any sponsorship for these videos. I love doing them. If you do want to support some of the things I do, feel free to go over to sean.wildermuth.com, see a lot of the things I can do, as well as go to Pluralsight and watch my courses. Each view really helps me there. In addition, if you want to like and or subscribe, that always helps. And let's have that conversation down below the like button. Let's ask me the tough questions. Tell me that you didn't like this or that you were surprised by this or you're surprised that I didn't know this already. All of that would be useful to me. Let's have that conversation below. Again, this is Sean Wildermuth for Coding Shorts. Thanks for joining me.